Why did soldiers use guns from home or captured weapons? One of a soldier's most distinctive features were his personal weapons. From the earliest wars until the more modern day conflicts, a soldier's life depended on his weapons functioning properly. This was the reason why each soldier took special care cleaning, lubricating, and practicing with their personal weapons. Over the years, there have been a variety of rules and regulations on providing essential equipment to soldiers. With the introduction of more modern standing armies, it became standard to supply soldiers with government-issued guns only. These were factory-made weapons designed to meet the special criteria of the army and that each soldier was obliged to carry. However, in a wartime situation, this was a rule that was often sidestepped. There would always be men who would have a special bond with their personal weapons. Sometimes it was so great that they preferred using their own guns from home instead of the army-issued ones. During World War II, it was not uncommon for soldiers to carry personal sidearms. This was often the case with officers, especially the senior ones. The most famous example of an officer who carried his own personal sidearm was General George S. Patton. He always carried a revolver throughout the war. One of his favorites was a 45 caliber Colt Model 1873 single action army revolver with a four and three quarter inch barrel. This revolver was used by the American Armed Forces long before World War II, but Patton continued to carry it as it was the gun he used during the U.S. expedition in Mexico against Pancho Villa, which ended in 1917. Patton's revolver was silver plated, rich in decoration, and was fitted with ivory grips, so it didn't look anything like a standard service weapon. He was also fond of carrying another handgun, the 357 Magnum Smith & Wesson, which also had ivory grips fitted, and he referred to this as his killing gun. Contrary to common belief, he did not carry these two guns together on his belt like a cowboy, apart from when he was posing for photographs. World War II soldiers were prone to using their own guns from home as well. Bringing one along with you when you enlisted was strictly forbidden by the army. However, once on the front line, Soldiers found a way to get their guns delivered through the mail they received. Inside the packages that they received from their families in the States, there would be a hidden revolver. Soldiers carried their guns along and used them in combat despite the regulations, but often with the knowledge of their superiors. Far more common, though, was when soldiers managed to capture enemy weapons that they later used in combat themselves. What's more, many of these were smuggled back to the United States after the war had ended as personal trophies. The custom of bringing one's own guns from home became even more frequent during the Vietnam War. Even though soldiers were obliged to carry only army-issued weapons in combat, in reality it was very different. In the same fashion as in World War II, soldiers received guns from home via parcels in the mail. There was a whole arsenal of smuggled weapons used by American soldiers in Vietnam, from revolvers and pistols to small submachine guns like the M3 grease gun. Many of the pieces were often part of a family's private collection, brought home by the soldiers' fathers and other relatives from previous wars as souvenirs. Military bases, and especially distant outposts, were full of these weapons along with those captured from clashes with the enemy. Officially, these were strictly prohibited, but due to the harsh conditions of warfare, officers were likely to turn a blind eye to a soldier's auxiliary arsenal. Very often, soldiers would use them in combat instead of their standard weapons, provided that they could get a hold of suitable ammunition. Captured AK-47s and the Chinese-made Chi-Com Type 56 automatic proved to be very popular, especially among helicopter crews and special forces as they were very reliable and sounded the same as the enemy's guns in a firefight, so it was not so obvious to the enemy who was firing them if you were in the concealed position. Even more desirable was the folding stock version. After Vietnam, rules and regulations in the United States Armed Forces became much more rigid and it became practically impossible for soldiers to carry along non-government-issued weapons. Guns from home remained at home.